Hi ladies, welcome back to Tamar, our portrait of restoration. And remember in our last session we talked about looking in. And I asked you ladies to think about four things. Number one, what do you need to stop? Number two, what do you need to start? Number three, what do you need to let go of? And number four, what do you need to grab, grab a hold of? What do you need to grab onto? And we studied Tamar, we studied looking in. And ladies, this session we're going to talk about looking around. We looked in, now it's time to look around. And the first question I want to ask you today is, what are you waiting for to be used of God? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for, ladies? You know, what circumstance are you waiting for? You know, can I tell you something? It's never going to be perfect, and it's never going to be easy. I'm reading a book by Dr. David Jeremiah, and in one of the chapters he talks about when you do things for, for the Lord or what he's called you to do. And he said, number one, first it's impossible. Number two, then it is difficult. Number three, then it is done. I like that because you know what? It's never easy. When God says something to you, maybe he's saying go back to school. Maybe he's saying start a, a, a new business. Maybe he's saying, you know, write the book. You know, whatever it is that God is speaking to your heart, it's not going to be easy. Because he wants us to do what we can do, but he wants us to step out in faith and rely upon him to do what only God can do. What circumstance are you waiting for to be used of God? Um, Joel, John Osteen said this. I love this quote. When I first heard it from his um, daughter, I memorized it. And it says this, Great it is to dream a dream when you stand in youth by a starry stream. But an even greater thing is to fight life through and say in the end, the dream came true. You know, ladies, it's, it's great to dream. Just like that quote said, great it is to dream a dream. But it's easy to dream. It's easy to dream about that marriage that you want. It's easy to dream about that business, that career, that book, that song you want to write. The list can go on and on. It's great to dream those things. But an even greater thing is at the end of your life, when your family is around you, when your friends are around you, you can say, yes, I've dreamed the dream. But you know what? That dream, it came true. It's easy to dream. It's great to dream, yes, it's, but it's easy to dream. But it's harder to fight. It's harder to fight life through. You know, Psalm 144 verse 1 says this, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers to battle. You know, ladies, one of the things I'm learning this year that the Lord is teaching me through my circumstances, through different trials that, that my family and I are going through, is how to be a warrior for Him. How to look around and say, you know what, these things belong to me. They belong to my boys. They belong to my husband. And I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight fight to see those things come true in, in my life and in the life of my family. You know, God is teaching me to be a warrior, a warrior for God this year. And like I said, not to fight against people, flesh and blood, but against principalities. What does the Bible say? Principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Not to fight against people, but to fight against the enemy of our soul. Number one, as we look around, what are you waiting for to be used of God? Number two, Tamar came to the place where she knew Tamar was not going to keep his promise. Tamar looked around and she realized that what was promised to her was not going to be given. You have to understand, remember, ladies, that she had two husbands. The first two died. And according to the Levite marriage, she was supposed to have the third one because she didn't have any kids. And so she needed to raise up boys to the, to the first um, son's name. But I love the tenacity of Tamar because she looked around and she realized, yes, Judah is not going to do his part. But the tenacity of Tamar rose up within her and she said, I refuse to be forgotten. And what did she do? Yes, she dressed up as a prostitute. Yes, she had sexual relations with her father-in-law. Yes, she didn't do the things right, but she acted. She didn't act in a right way. Yes. Do you act always in a right way? No. Do I act always in a right way? No. But she acted. She had a promise from a man named Tam uh, from a man named Judah. She refused to be forgotten, and she went after that promise in the best way that she knew how. You know, ladies, as we look around. Sometimes we may put our hope and confidence in a person. They, they say, oh, you know what, you do this and I'm going to open up this door. Maybe it's a boss, maybe it's a minister, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's you know a loved one. And they, they forget the promise. They don't do what they've promised to do. As you look around, we have to know what is ours. And we need to 
to look around and know what is ours and remember that two wrongs don't make a right but we have to go out and we have to get those things that belong to us even if people um, like I said break their promises to us we need to act in a way um, before the Lord to in faith to, to receive those things that belong to us you know ladies as we look around we may also see giants in the land you may look around and uh, I'll give you an example I've shared this story before but um, this past year when uh, my husband and I were going through a, a difficult time and uh, I just felt I just felt all these mountains before me I knew what what God was speaking but yes yeah, I said Lord these mountains there's no way that there's just too too much God that you're gonna have to do there's too much these mountains are, are too big I don't I don't know what you're gonna do and I was praying one night and, and I was really discouraged and I went to bed and I felt the Lord put this on my spirit and he said this I felt him put, put this on my heart he said Maria your mountains are just hills to me and he put that scripture in my heart this this scripture I look at unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the Lord and you know ladies you may look around and you may say gosh Lord those giants there's giants in my land God there's mountains in my land but those those mountains are just heels to him and can I tell you this ladies he's teaching your hands to war he's teaching your fingers to battle those giants that in your land those giants that may be in my land were meant to be slain they weren't meant to be lived with they were meant to be cohabitated with okay giant you stay over here and you know you go on this side of the promised land and I'll just get, go on my side of the promised land and you know we'll be happy no our giants the giants in our land were meant to be slain you need to remember ladies that the devil will use a fact in our lives to discourage us in such a way that it'll stop us from moving forward let me give you an example it may be a fact that you lost your job yes that's a fact that you've lost your job but when you lose your job the devil will whisper in your ear Do you know why you lost your job because you were a loser it was just a matter of time before you before they fired you it's a fact that your children are rebellious maybe they're not serving God right now and the devil comes and he whispers those things into our ears those lies and he said you know why your, your kids aren't are rebellious because you're a bad parent it's a fact that you're having trouble in your marriage and the devil will come and say you know why you're having trouble in your marriage because you don't deserve to be loved yes I know the Bible says that God came to give us life and life more abundantly but you don't deserve that abundant life you don't deserve it you know God will take the same facts in our life and use them in such a way that it propels us forward it propels us to to keep going and to be the woman that God has called us to be let's go over those same scenarios it's a fact that you lost your job but the but God will come and he'll proclaim darling you've lost your job but when God closes when I close one door darling I'm gonna open another it's a fact that your children are rebellious but God comes and he proclaims the word of God over your life and said darling the seed of the righteous shall be delivered it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when your children are going to serve the Lord because your seed is going to be delivered you're having trouble in your marriage and God comes and he proclaims darling what I put together let no man put asunder I'm going to work this thing out and you're going to be a testimony to everyone else around you who may be going through difficulty in their marriage you know ladies we look around and we may see the facts of our life and the devil may say one thing and God is proclaiming another and and we have to choose who we're gonna believe are we gonna believe the report of the Lord or we're gonna be believe the lies of the devil so ladies we look we looked around we looked in we looked around and next week we're gonna look up we're going to look up at the faithfulness of Almighty God in the life of Tamar and in our own life.